Hi. For the last weeks, the weather was quite windy over here. And we forgot a glass table outside of the house and because of the wind, it got broken down. I was gonna throw away all the glass pieces that fall on the ground, but I thought maybe I can use these glass pieces to make a PCB. To be able to cut the glasses, you need to find a glass cutter. They are quite cheap and you can find one of those in a hardware store. There are small diamond cylinders on these cutters and you draw a line, then you cut it yourself. And there are also a few sizes that you can try, just you need to turn the wheel and select the correct size for it. Afterwards, you just draw a line on the glass, then you break the glass from this cut. I bought this one around 2 euros. If you take a look at the YouTube videos to cut a glass, you can see that it looks quite simple thing to do. So I thought I will give it a try. And I followed these YouTube videos. I placed the glass piece on the floor. To be able to draw a straight line, I picked up a ruler with a leveling on it. Then the next step is carefully drawing a line with one go. Again, it looked very easy on the YouTube videos, but I couldn't really done it quite well and tried a couple of times to draw a single line, but I couldn't really manage it in one go. So I practiced it again and again and again until being able to draw a straight line. It looks like a trivial thing to do, but let me assure you, it's not that easy. After quite a bit of trial and error, I finally got to manage to draw a simple line. After this, you simply need to tap it. And it was supposed to be the way to make a straight cut. It didn't work quite well on me, but this is the cut that I got as close as I could to make a straight one. After quite a bit of failures, I decided to go with this piece, which has mirror-like surface. Making a PCB with this type of glass would look cooler, I guess. This piece is the one that I got close to a proper rectangle. Cutting a glass is one of those things, looks like a child's play, but in fact very hard. If you are not feeling comfortable, you can ask it to a glassmaker to cut a piece for you, or buy a pre-cut one. On the next step, I cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol. You should make sure that there isn't any particle left on the glass. Then I made a circuit diagram, and this time I decided to use these Tencent microcontrollers. They have a RISC-V core, and I think every maker should have a couple of these microcontrollers on their drawers. And this schematic is for a breakout board, so there isn't much on it. On the PCB side, I used 0.6mm as track witness, and I made these big pads for the header for the pins. I plan to fill them with solder to make them more durable. And this is the 3D view of this. I really started liking KiCat by the way. You should also play with it if you haven't done already. Then I click the print button. I only need the front layer, so I am deselecting all the other layers here. And once I get left with only the front layer, you might be familiar with the toner transfer methods and there we usually use this print mirrored button, but for this one I left it unchecked and I use one on one scale and selected black and white output mode. And on the page setup menu, select the correct orientation. For the first print on the paper, regular settings are fine. And this is the printout on a paper on my laser printer. After this, I placed the paper on a desk and checked if it is fitting inside of this glass. And since it's transparent, it's a pretty easy thing to do. For a while back ago, I bought this copper tape. It is exactly like a tape, but with a copper foil. A while back ago, I saw this and I thought, hmm, that might be useful one day. So I guess this is the day for it. I unrolled the copper tape to roughly the size of the glass, and maybe even longer around 1 cm longer from the each side. It had a bit of wrinkles on the beginning of the tape, so I cut those bits to get a clean surface. Then I removed the glass from the paper and checked if it is in the correct size. It is a little bigger than the PCB, so I'm gonna cut from the bottom and the top side of it from the behind, here and from here. And by the cut I mean I'm not gonna entirely cut it, but just going to remove the piece underneath the copper. I'm gonna use it to stick it to the paper. Just give me a moment. Then I remove the paper side of the copper tape and leave the adhesive exposed. 
You should be a little bit careful here, because if you are not, you easily create more wrinkles on it. That's why I am extra careful here. After this, I am sticking it on the paper. Sticky side shouldn't get on the printed part. Then again, I am carefully sticking it as smooth as possible. But if the PCB is a little bit big, it leaves a little bit of a gap between the copper and on the paper. That's why I am using a glue stick around the PCB. I think you can even apply it to the glue on the PCB itself, but right now I am avoiding it. Then I am simply sticking the copper tape onto the printed part. You should also be really careful here because you don't want to create some sort of damaged surface or get any wrinkles on the copper tape because this thing is very sensitive. The glue itself made the paper a little bit wavy and I want to avoid that as well. That's why I am putting a heavy book on the area and I will leave it like that until the glue is dried up. On the next day I printed exactly the same file with the best printing settings with the printer. If you do not use the best printing settings, then you will not get a proper result. On my printer, to get the best result, I selected paper type as cardboard. To get the best result, you might need to play with the printer settings. This one looks okay. There are a few imperfections on the print, mostly on the copper surface. While printing out, it created this wrinkle around here. And some of the lines are not continuous. You might of course get another print if it is too severe, but you can also touch up to those areas. So I touched up to the areas where printer didn't really print properly with a permanent marker. This is important for getting a proper etching. And this is what it looks like after a little bit of a touch up. And the next step is removing the copper from the paper. And I am doing that by simply cutting it. After all these steps, you should have something like this. The next step is sticking it on the glass. You should be quite careful here. I have wasted a few foils because I was not careful and ripped the copper apart. So do it as slow as possible. Cause starting over after all this is really annoying. After all that, you should have something like this. Try to get rid of any wrinkles or bubbles by pressing on the glass as much as possible. While sticking it up on the glass and rubbing it with my hand, I accidentally deleted some of the lines. So I think it's a good idea to touch up after you transferred it on the glass. And here is my retouch up. Again, I used a permanent marker to draw the lines. Next step is etching up the exposed copper. To etch it up, I am using iron chloride. You can get a bottle like that from Amazon and it will last you for a long time. Then I put some iron chloride in a plastic container and place the glass inside of it. Although it is not as aggressive as some house cleaning products, still you need to be careful while handling with this. Try to avoid any skin or eye contact with it. Only use plastic stuff. If you use anything metal, it will melt it away. It removes any exposed copper around 15 minutes, but in every 5 minutes or so, I give it a little bit of a shake. For example, after 6 minutes, it started eating away the exposed copper, but it's not finished yet. So I will come back here 5 minutes later again. In total, around 15 minutes has been passed and all the exposed copper is eaten away. While removing it from the solution, use a plastic glow. You shouldn't hold it more than necessary in the solution. Otherwise, it will start to eat away the parts which you left under the ink. Then you clean it under the water. It doesn't need to be a special water, just tap water will do. There shouldn't be any remnants of iron chloride after the cleaning. Also, if a droplet falls on the sink, clean that one as well, because it will leave a mark. On the paper transfer method, I was always using acetone. But here, if you do that, you are spreading away the ink everywhere and it looks pretty awful. On a regular PCB, it's not really big of a deal. But here, since it's just sticking on a glue, you are in fact eating away the glue itself as well. So my recommendation, do not use acetone. Because of that, I had to start over again. And obviously it was quite annoying. You see, there are no tracks left. I will clean it all and start over again. 
I forgot that the acetone was quite aggressive on the chemicals. For example, I painted over the desk with red paint and it removed it quite easily. So, new trial. I did every steps from the beginning and I've got this far. And this is the result after etching it with iron chloride. This time I clean it with 99% alcohol. There are a bit of dirt on it because the ink stuck on the glue. However, I will not clean it properly right now because it will get dirtier after soldering it anyway. And on the surface, everything looks continuous, but it's always a good idea to check the continuity of the tracks because otherwise you can spend a lot of time on soldering and doing stuff and you won't be able to find a problem easily. And it will take only a few minutes. Then I soldered all the components. Here are famous Tencent RISC-V microcontroller. And here is the LED and a resistor. And also while soldering this thing up, you should be a little bit careful. You cannot use a hot air gun to solder onto this. Cause the adhesive which is still remaining on the glass is burning up. And the way to solder is, you first put a little bit of a soldering paste to the joint that you want to solder and get a little bit solder on the soldering iron and just put it away slightly for around 1 and 2 seconds and quickly remove the soldering iron. That way you don't burn the remaining adhesive and also the tracks don't fall off. This is as clean as I was able to clean it. Well, I think it looks okay and obviously you can clean it better than me but you should be careful about not removing any tracks while doing so cause the copper tracks are held by only by the adhesive which is coming from the tape which is not really that strong by the way then I filled up all the pads with the solder it makes working on it easier and I'm using them to access the pins for example I have used these cables and soldered them on the pads to be able to program it afterwards of course I removed the cables because it wasn't looking that good obviously but usually I find it easier to just solder a cable than installing uh, let's say a header pin like this one obviously this one won't work because it's pretty hard to drill a hole on the glass because the thing is if you are having troubles while cutting a straight line on the glass drilling a hole on it is not really something that you should be trying on but it might be nice to experiment with it of course just leave a comment down in the description if you know an easier way. You can see there is a cable I soldered to the USB connector because I wasn't able to use it. And the reason is, for example, if I get this cable, the glass itself was blocking the entry point of the USB connector. That's why I removed it and moved it a little bit upper side of the glass. And of course, I soldered a few copper plates. And of course, it needs to be functional. So here is the most exciting part. And it is and the reason why the LED is illuminating so low is I used one of the resistors which was laying around on the desk and unfortunately it had a higher value. But after closing up the lights you can see it's blinking as you were expecting it to be. So there you are, a breakout board but it is on the glass. There might be nice applications to this rather than a breakout board and if you came up with an idea please let me know down in the comments. The biggest downside of this process is I think the strength of the adhesive. It's not really that strong and you should make the tracks as thick as possible. I don't think using a connector like USB is a nice idea as well because adhesive can fall off. To strengthen the tracks and also the connector I have stolen this nail polisher from wifey. She doesn't watch any of my videos, so this will be a secret between you and me. I tried nail polishers before and they work great as a solder mask. I am using the transparent one, well, because it is a glass and you want it to be transparent. And it will increase the lifetime of this PCB. In case you need to, let's say, rework on the PCB, you can remove it with the acetone quite easily. But you should be of course careful, because if you are not, you can remove the adhesive which is holding the copper on the glass as well. And it gets ready after a few minutes, and it's dried up. 
Of course, the light is a little bit dim, as I mentioned before, but you can see it in the dark. I think to improve this process, there are a few things that you can try. You can apply it on a glass before sticking the copper on it. For example, maybe super glue or something, but it leaves a nasty residue. Also, you should avoid silicone-based glues as well. Best one would be, I think, ultraviolet activated glues. But most of us don't have any ultraviolet light source in the house. And at this point, I think I should have cleaned it more properly because it does make a difference about how it looks. But I am satisfied with it as it is looks right now. If you have nice ideas about this process, again, just leave a comment down in the description. And see you next time.